Hi, this is Steven Orlando. I am the creator of Treasure Adventure Game, and you are watching my video post-mortem of Treasure Adventure Game. Um, I've been wanting to do a uh, post-mortem for this game for quite a while, um, but I'm just not one who's good at sitting down uh, to write something and have it come out the way I'm, I have it in my head. I've just never been very good at that. So <clears throat> I've been trying to, I wanted to get into uh, doing more recorded videos and trying to show off, you know, gameplay for the projects I'm working on. So this is a way for me to get a little bit more used to that as well as sharing with you, you know, some of the things that, um, you know, that happened to me while I was working on the game or some of the things that were going on. And um, hopefully it'll be interesting and, you know, hopefully this will be a good way for me to get out um, some of my thoughts and ideas, um, of, you know, through the creation of this game. So uh, we're going to start from the beginning. I'm going to play through it. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it or if I'm going to you know, edit it and cut it down, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and start. Um, as you, Right now you're seeing the intro sequence to the game. Um, I think one of the things that I definitely regret um, uh, was making this intro so long. I actually, you actually kind of skip this part and I'm going to do that. Uh, I had, had a lot of people complain about how long the game is, and it's funny. Whenever, every time I um, see somebody had... Uh, Put together a let's play i always uh, sit down to watch it and i just realize how long this intro sequence is usually the first 10 minutes of, of everyone's video is just them getting through this and i'd probably try to um if i was going to do it again i'd probably try to cut this down a little bit shorten it up it's a little drags on a little bit i did want there to be a nice intro sequence to get you into the the mood of the game since you know it's a pretty um long adventure and I did want to have, you know, a backstory to these characters and have some mystery. So I, I, I wanted to do, you know, I definitely wanted to include something like this, but uh, I do realize that it probably should have uh, been a little quicker, got you, got you into the action a little faster. But, you know, once you get into it, you know, once you pass it, it's not so bad, I suppose. So here we go. <clears throat> the, uh, I did kind of want... And I'm sure most people were able to figure this out right away, but I did sort of want it to be ambiguous as to whether or not the the boy that you're playing as in this beginning sequence is is the same character that you uh, that you start playing the game as. I know it's not a big mystery really, but I did want there to be some sort of mystery as to like what maybe what time this took place or you know what was going on here exactly in relation to um, the actual game, but. It's hard for me to tell whether that, that was successful or not, since you know I know exactly what was going on. Um, <clears throat> so that's the end of the dream sequence. The uh, this part, you know, this is very much the way I guess most Zelda games would start, right? Where you sort of wake up from a dream and uh, some, you know, grandparent or uncle or parent of some sort, you know, wakes you up sends you on an adventure. Nothing really that original, but it's it works. It works in Zelda, right? So it can work here. <clears throat> this is definitely, I wanted to have a panning shot here so that you would kind of know right off the bat that you were on an island um, before you even explored it. I kind of wanted, that's kind of why this shot is here. This um, this uh, music that's playing here, it's only kind of plays in the game. Um, we kind of wanted to have a little like intro sequence, that, intro music that got you kind of kicked off the game. So. Uh, the guy fishing in the background, that was, um, I wanted to have a lot more of that kind of stuff going on in the game. I wanted there to be, as you travel around, more ships and, and more, so it seemed like, you know, this is a world where people really, uh, you know, are truly living on islands and traveling around on islands. So I never really, that was one thing that I kind of had to cut out at the end. I wanted to add a lot more of that, but, um, yeah, you know, you to, sometimes you just got to cut things for time. So. so the other thing, a big part of this game is I wanted, I kind of wanted there to be, um, I wanted it to be, you know, non-linear, but at the same time, it's a big world, so that's kind of how the map system um, came about. Essentially, I wanted to give the player direction, so they kind of always knew the next place they had to go, but, um, I didn't want to like force them to have to, you know, visit each, um, 
with each spot. Or at the very, you know, the first about hour of the game, you do kind of have to go. You know, it's sort of linear, but that's just to get you kind of on the way, on your way, and figure out the mechanics and all that. So I figured that was probably acceptable. But yeah, I definitely. Uh, yeah, so I figured right from the bat, you know, the player would see they have a map. They wouldn't know that, you know, that it's going to eventually be able to use, use to guide them. But I like how that sort of gets unveiled, you know, slowly. So, so here we go. This is a, sort of the first training ground for how to use your attack. And I also, you know, I like I love things like this where there's a little mystery and you see, okay, there's clearly something down there. I'm gonna come back. I mean, that's very much, you know, what the Metroidvania is all about, I suppose. You know, teasing the player, um, giving them a little hint of something, and then hopefully they'll either make a note of that or remember and come back later. So I, uh, I definitely try to throw in a lot of stuff like that. Um, also try to throw in a lot of stuff like this. Little little hidden areas to me always when you find them. It always feels like a big win. So I love uh, I love stuff like that. This, this actually intro sequence, like the, the steps you have to take, you know, it was difficult for me to, to figure out what would be the best way. If you, if you tried, for example, if you tried to skip that and, and not visit your grandfather and just go straight to the museum, you know, the museum's locked. And I tried to make it, you know, like I said, it'd be nice, I, I wanted it to be so that you, know, you could just maybe skip that but and just go right to the museum, but I wanted to keep the player, I wanted, I wanted to make sure they didn't miss, you know, certain certain conversation so they, they got a good idea of what's going on. So that in the beginning here there are some things like this where you kind of have to do things in order um, but I did try to eventually sort of uh, break away from that as the game uh, as you got further along in the game. I'm just going to save it here just in case I really screw up here. It has been a while since I played this. I don't think I've actually played the game since before I released it. You know, or The last playthrough I did was the one before I said okay the game's done so uh, it's probably been I don't know, three or four months. Hopefully I'll actually remember what I have to do. The, uh, I loved this, um, I'm just going to go back up here. I, I, I really thought this was funny, like having the, uh, hopefully other people thought it was funny too, having this sort of like museum, this very like seemingly safe place and this horrific dungeon underneath. Um, I don't know, it kind of just happened almost accidentally. I wasn't really planning on it to have that sort of, uh, you know, that jump from one scene to another, but I really like the way it worked out, and of course the music uh, is perfect for it, so thanks to uh, Robert Ellis for that. These, uh, these tracks actually, the museum track and this track were a couple of the first ones that he did for me, um, and I knew right, right off the bat that we were heading in the right direction with the music. The very first track he did ended up not making it into the game. It's, um, it was an alternate version of the theme music for the overworld that we were um, in the first area up there. So we ended up um, not using that version. It was a little too fast and didn't really fit what really became sort of the feel of the game. But um, you know, it, we actually included it in the. Um, if you buy the soundtrack, it is included in there as a bonus track. So if you do want to hear it, it's, it's available. But um, didn't make it in the game. But other than that, almost everything he did um, ended up making it. Yeah, the hats, um, the hats sort of happened at, um, just because I wanted to have, well actually it kind of came from um, the game that came before Tag, which is Karma, which I'm going to have to talk about at some point. But I just like the idea of having your character be a little customizable. Um, so I, actually, what did he say? I think he said we have to go find the compass and stuff. So, um, yeah, so the, the hats are originally just there so that you could sort of have some customization. I feel like if you can customize your character, you can feel a little bit more attached to them. And I know the character is kind of kind of bland and sort of a blank slate, so um, so I purposely wanted to have some ways for you to you know make them feel like they're uh, they're yours a little bit. <clears throat> so this part actually, so you, the bird tells you to come here talk to the, the store key. Um, that actually part is optional. You could actually skip this, but I figured um, for people who didn't you know, feel like you know, exploring on their own, this is a good way for them to figure out 
Um, where they have to go. So he's telling you, you gotta get to uh, Angel Oak. And of course, I placed close by, there's a sign that points you there. So the idea here is like, okay, now you, you gotta travel a little further than you've traveled before, but give the player a little bit of a, a hint so they don't, have, they don't feel like they have to, you know, travel around everywhere and get. But one thing that does, that always, you know, is kind of annoying about games like Metroidvania is all the backtracking. And I know there's a significant amount of backtracking here that I try to avoid as much as possible, but uh, that's, that tends to happen when you uh, design it in a world like this. I feel like this is probably very interesting, but I'm gonna. What I'll try to do is for future videos, um, I'm gonna write down some things that I know that I definitely want to talk about, and I'll try to have sort of an agenda. Right now, I'm just sort of going off whatever uh, comes up. I like how later on you can. Uh, these, are, these fish are pretty annoying. But I like later on you can you get the cannon and uh, get your revenge on them. So let's see, we gotta go, we gotta go up here. So I'll just give you a little background here. The, uh, the spider enemies in this game were actually the first enemy I mean, when I first started, let me just back up, when I first started making the game that came before uh, Tag, it was Karma, and I used a lot of the same enemies and sprites and things, and the, um, the spiders were the first enemy that I, this is a glitch right here, it's that, um, the enemies were the first spider that, or the, the spider were the first enemy that I really, like, coded, and I really used, um, I was basically just using someone's uh, tutorial on how to, Make them, and I, they're actually really poorly coded. And actually, that's why I don't know if you've ever noticed. There's three different spiders, different colors, and uh, and uh, any, any any particular frame, any particular like like level or you know screen. There's only one of each color, and that's simply because I just I coded them so poorly that I could only have one of each. They're, if you put more than one on one more color on the same screen, they just don't work. <laughs> so. That is why you uh, there's three different colored spiders, and you will never see more than one colored spider on a particular frame. And you know, as I um, as I went, you know, I got a little bit better at that kind of stuff. And but I never went back and fixed them just because uh, they worked. And why well, go back and fix something that works? So that was kind of my strategy for this game. That's probably how it got finished. And things weren't always perfect, but if they got if they were close enough, then I left it. <laughs> Uh, you probably have noticed many of those things in the game. The, um, controlling the parrot was something that I thought of, you know, there's, you got this bird, it's following your eyes, kind of useless for the most part, so I, I want to throw in something like that. I wish I could have done a little bit more with it. Again, it was um, not tacked on per se, but probably should have been something that I had thought of more from the beginning of the game, but it was something late that, you know, midway point to the game, like, oh, I really ought to make the bird have some use, and so... That's why those are there. That that was one of the other complaints I feel like was kind of common was those sequences were a little off, and I I tend to agree that they definitely don't feel um, quite right. So so here you go. So here's the green spider. If you notice down below, this is all the same. This whole tree is all one layout, and uh, at the bottom there is a red and a blue one, and there's a green one. But you won't see any other ones in this whole uh, this whole layout. So. So I think I'm going to go get the compass, and that's probably going to be the end for this video. I'm going to try to keep these to uh, 15 minutes apiece. I think that's all YouTube uh, allows me to do. But, uh, so let's see, get this. Do I have enough coins? Alright. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. I'm just going to go down and save it. Next. So yes, yeah, so I hope this is interesting. I hope you'll keep you know watching. Um, if you subscribe to my channel, I'll, I'm going to keep um, going to keep pumping out these postmortem videos for Tag. I'm also going to be put, including a lot more gameplay videos for my um, my new project, the uh, Space Shooter, which actually I, did, I, I now have a name for it. So the next video I'll release that, and um, 
Yeah, I'll see you next time.